the RBI has red flagged non-banking financial companies, in short NBFCs, in its annual report that their balance sheet is expanding for the year 2021-22 and the asset quality is deteriorating. The non-banking financial companies are also known as shadow banks. So let's see what is shadow banking. Shadow banking is a system used to describe bank-like activities, mainly lending activities, that take place outside the traditional banking sector by the shadow banks. These companies are often known as non-banking financial companies. Shadow bank lending has a similar function to traditional bank lending. However, it is not regulated in the same way as traditional bank lending. That means that the traditional bank here are public and private banks like SBI, PNB, ICICI, HDFC, etc. So here one thing you must be get clear that the non-banking financial company look like a bank but they can't accept the deposit. They can only lend credit that is the loan. Shadow banks are generally unregulated and not subject to the same kinds of risk, liquidity and capital restrictions as traditional banks are. The shadow banking system consists of lenders, brokers and other credit intermediaries who fall outside the realm of traditional regulated banking. The non-banking financial companies were given the moniker shadow banks by the economist Paul McCulley. So let's see what are the risks associated with the shadow banking. In 2008 financial crisis shown that the shadow banking can be a source of systematic risk to the banking system. The risk can be transmitted directly and through the interconnectedness of the partially regulated entities with the banking system. So in short, we can say that the 2000 financial crisis which occurred in the world was due to these over shadow banking uh, which gave unnecessary loans to the entities which were not capable to repay back. The shadow banking system has escaped regulation mainly because unlike traditional banks, these institutions do not accept deposits. Do not accept deposit like we go and open an account and deposit our, our money. So that is not accepted by these shadow banks. Generally, these institutions are not allowed to take traditional demand deposits from the public. This limitation keeps them outside the scope of conventional oversight from the central and the state financial regulators. So this becomes like a bless, blessing for them that if they are not taking any kind of acceptance, you know, demand deposit. So they are outside the scope of any check and regulation. Why is RBI tightening shadow banking rules? The Reserve Bank of India is simply following the trend of global central banks, increasing surveillance on shadow banking. The Basel III norms require central banks to tighten supervision on shadow banks across the globe through steps such as defending minimum capital. Let's see some of the examples of entities that are engaged in shadow banking. Some of them are bond funds, market money market funds finance companies mortgage lenders insurance companies what are the advantages or disadvantages of shadow banking an advantage to shadow banking is that it reduces the dependency on traditional banks as a source of credit so you can go there you can take loan from there you need not to go to any you know public or uh, you know public or uh, private sector bank for getting the loan this is a positive benefit for the economy because it acts as an additional source of lending and provides diversification in the financial system. You know, some people are not you know, permitted to go to the regular banks, which are you know, the commercial banks to take loans. So they directly go to these shadow banks and these shadow banks, after fulfilling some of the requirements, provide them loan. And this is the, you know, this is also a boon and this can also be, you know, something which is not good for the economy. On the other hand, there is a risk that shadow banking can contribute to too much lending in the economy you know people are coming and getting loan very easily so there is so much lending in the economy you know too much money is going out people are taking money but they are not returning back you know their loans in a proper or regular manner this has the potential to lead to a harmful downtown for the economy that's all for today see you soon